It's your boy, Big Baby Miller here. Listen, we're knocking on all bums. First, it's going to be Dylan White. If it's going to be Joseph Pogba. But you know who got the story right? Mr. Boxing today. You check him out. He got all the latest news on the heavyweight division. And if you don't know me, you soon will. Because I'm kicking everybody ass. Heavyweight boxing fans, what's the deal? All right, man. I'm just going to pretty much freestyle this video, man. Um don't necessarily know what exactly i'm gonna talk about i'm gonna try to get to a few things not try to make it too long um there's some good under the radar heavyweight fights man at least that i'm paying attention to um i know a lot of fans they're more looking at just joshua Takam, and then next week you got wilder and stavern obviously those are the headliners and those are the fights that um that are the most meaningful but there's some meaningful, you know, prospects, in my opinion, at least, that are fighting in the upcoming weeks here. You got Simon King. He was Olympian for Canada. He's 10-0 right now. Um, I want to see how his uh, career. Randy Johnson. <laughs> when I think of Randy Johnson, I think of the Major League Baseball player. But, yeah, he's fighting a guy named Randy Johnson. Um, when is that fight? Friday? Yeah, that fight's Friday. Philippe Herkovic will be back in action. He's fighting another undefeated uh, guy. Um, I expect Herkovic to take care of business. Let me see here. Who else? Pierre Madsen. I've heard of him before. He's fighting on a uh, Saturday. Um, then Saturday, the big one, Joshua Takam, White Hellenius, Allen versus who's this? Scott Sauer. I thought he was fighting Linwood Thomas. Did, did Thomas pull out that fight? Did I miss some news about that? Somebody leave a link in the comment section, man, if I miss some news about Lenroy Thomas pulling out that fight. I want to see Allen see if he can revenge his loss. But, uh, so let's just talk about the, the uh, this big fight this weekend. Joshua Takam. I seen the uh, press conference they had, and I was looking at the size difference between the two. Not that size means everything, but damn, man. At least from the from the footage that I seen, Takam looks like a damn medium sized cruiserweight standing next to uh, Anthony Joshua as far as his height. But then you know Takam is a very muscular guy, so it's not like he's some uh, he's short he's shorter, but he's not as far as his uh, you know being muscular and being wide shoulder and being a strong strong looking athlete. He seems pretty explosive. I think he will revert to some back foot. I. I think he'll approach this fight in ways that he approached Pavekin. I think he'll move a little bit, give Joshua the shoulder. I think he'll try to counter punch. I don't think he'll come out trying to walk Joshua down the way he did. Uh, let me see. Tony Thompson. I don't, I don't think he'll approach this fight the way he, he did Thompson, where he was trying to walk Thompson down. Uh, I think Joshua has um, just too you know too much of a powerful puncher. And I think he can give Takam all he wants on the inside. Although Takam is the shorter guy, you would think his leverage being that short, he can get in Joshua's chest and probably dig to his body and then try to go upstairs. That possibly could work. We'll see. That's the beauty about all this. We will see on Saturday. But um, now I think I thought I heard Joshua say something like he wants to take it to he wants to take it to Takam. So if he takes it to him. We'll see, man. You know, we will see what happens. But I'm definitely picking Joshua in that fight. I think Joshua should just use his jab, keep Takam on the outside. Not necessarily move back, but just walk to Takam, but keep a jab out in front. Use your stick and then let right hands go. Just work everything off the jab. Keep that long jab. You know, I don't like when big guys just throw away their jabs. Even if you're a guy that can rumble on the inside like Riddick Bowe, Riddick Bowe will still use his jab. Sometimes he'll just say to hell with it, and then he'll just fight you on the inside if he was getting past the jab or he didn't think his jab was being effective enough or if he thought he just can bully you on the inside. But I don't like when 6'6", six 6'7", foot 6'5", six, six foot six foot even 6'4", guys, you know, just throw away their jabs. You know, use, you know, let's use your stick, man, especially against a shorter fighter. But, um... You know, Takam shows some some good, and I know I keep bringing up the Pavekin fight. That that to me is one of my favorite uh, heavyweight fights, um, in recent memory, not of all time, but just in recent memory. That was a very entertaining fight, in my opinion. But um, Takam in that fight showed that he can move, that he can use some box combinations or um, boxing skill. He can throw some combinations, use his footwork a little bit. Uh, he was making Pavekin miss at times, countering him back. 
you know, almost looked like a poor man's James Tony in that fight. You know, but should be an interesting fight, man. Dillian White versus Hellenius. This is a good one, man. Um, hmm. Hellenius' one loss is the Johan Duopa. He got knocked out in that fight. It's actually a fight that I got wrong. I actually predicted Hellenius to win the fight. Duopa knocked him out. If White can, you know, but Duopa, man, he was putting up the high guard. Well, he always fights like that. But he was putting up the high guard, coming forward, putting pressure on Hellenius, and he would start to clip him. White can fight that sort of fight, and I think he should go to the body, then catch Hellenius upstairs after he pressures him, works his body. Now, Hellenius, the same way he fought Samuel Peter and Derek Chisora, although a lot of people thought that Chisora beat him, Chisora was pressing him, getting him against the ropes. I thought Chisora was uh, smothering his own work against Hellenius. Um, both these guys actually fought Chisora. But, um, and one controversial, isn't that crazy? Both Hellenius and White fought Chisora and won controversial decisions. <laughs> That's crazy. But uh, Hellenius needs to use that. He should just fight like a big man. Use his jab, then follow with the right hook, and then wipe his nose with the, I mean, follow with the straight right hand, and then wipe his nose with the left hook. That's like a big man's uh, combination they always use. Jab, right hand, left hook, if they're orthodox, if they're southpaw, vice versa. So he needs, then I've seen him working on this uppercut during the pads, and we know Dillian White has a tendency sometimes, he'll put the high guard up, he'll come forward, um, Dillian has showed that he can bend at the waist a little bit, try to make you miss and roll with shots and use his shoulders, you know, sh shit like that. But sometimes he does have a tendency to lunge a little bit forward with his uh, chin, and maybe Hellenius can catch it with an uppercut. Should be an interesting fight, man. Then Dave Allen, I was looking forward to the Thomas fight. I've never heard of Scott Sauer. I've heard a lot of guys, man, so it's kind of rare for me not to hear some of these heavyweights, but I haven't heard of him. Um... And then let me just touch on this topic, too, because it's a hot topic and uh, people always asking my opinion about this whole Joshua White and Wilder situation. First of all, first thing is they all need to get past their opponents. That's kind of that kind of goes without saying. But besides that, besides, you know, Wilder needs to get past Stavern and White needs to get past Alenius, Joshua needs to get past Takum. Besides all that, though. Now. Eddie Hearn, you know, is saying and even White are saying that. Wilder's ducking them, you know, and he's, from my knowledge, he isn't he isn't a mandatory, so it's not like he's being ducked and he's a mandatory. And the WBC, they're making both of these fights title eliminators between White and Hellenius and then um, Molina and Brazil. So I think the WBC should just make that a box-off. The winner out of White and Hellenius fight the winner out of Molina versus Brazil. Now, if you're a team member of any of these four fighters, you're going to think what I'm saying is ridiculous. Why the hell, you know, because all these guys think they're getting wilder if they win their if they win their fight. Brazil said on his social media, on his Instagram, said, hey, you know, one step closer to wilder. It's got to beat Molina. Um, I spoke to Molina's trainer the other day, Robert Zapata, and from what he was saying, it's uh, after this fight, it's wilder if they win the fight against Brazil. And then I've heard Dillian White. Uh, and Eddie Hearn talk about if they beat Hellenius Wilder should be next. So from a fan's point of view, I think the winner of those two fights should have to fight each other. All right. Again, if you're a part of their teams, of course you don't want that. Of course you want Wilder straight away. So I understand, but I'm not a part of their teams. You know what I mean? I'm just a fan looking at this from the outside and I want things to make sense. Um, and I think that makes the most sense to me. Um, I guess we'll see what the WBC decides to do, man. But yeah, so, so you know, if White becomes mandatory after this, let's say that they do put him as mandatory, then Wilder, you know, doesn't have a choice but to face his mandatory sooner or later, all right? But again, man, my opinion stays the same. I don't see why Wilder needs to beat White to get Anthony Joshua. It just makes no sense. And the rebuttal to that is, Mr. Boxing, you got to understand, here in the UK, this is what the UK fans say, here in the UK, that would make it bigger because White is very popular out here. And him and AJ had an entertaining fight. And we just want to see how he does against White. And if he can beat White even more impressive, that makes it bigger. Okay. I don't really agree with that. But if that's what y'all think, man, that's that's I, I really don't see. You have two undefeated champions, knockout artists, arguably the two best heavyweights out right now. It'd be a three-built unification. That's enough hyping up as it is. In my opinion, I don't see what White brings to the table, man. If he beats Alenius, great. You know what I mean? Um, 
it's ironic that he's fighting Hellenius, a guy who his one loss is against a guy who people say is a bum because they say that every Wilder opponent's a bum and he lost to Duapa. So now if Dillian White beats Hellenius, his best win to be, yeah, if White beats Hellenius, we can argue that Hellenius is his best win. And I don't want to do the triangle thing, but shit, y'all do it to me all the time. So I'm just giving it back to you guys. It's like, okay, so if he beats Hellenius, Hellenius also lost to Duapa, which was a to you guys, one of Wilder's bums. You guys get what I'm saying here? Um, so he would have beaten Chisura and Hellenius. Those are solid wins. I'm not knocking. Those are solid wins. But after that, it's a complete drop-off. You got Dave Allen and Ian Lewison, tough domestic-level UK fighters. Don't get me wrong. Tough, tough domestic UK fighters, you know. But I just saw Lewison lose to a guy making his pro debut. Although Joe Joyce isn't your regular prospect. You know, he has a lot of amateur experience world series of boxing olympian so on and so forth you know so i think the dillian white fight and wilder it's a it's a it's a decent fight man you know but then i heard you know uh i just heard wilder on an interview uh, on 78 sports tv shout out to 78 sports tv and on the boxing voice i've been watching trying to catch up on many interviews as i can also fight hype and uh what was the other one somebody else did an interview with wilder I've been trying to keep up on all the interviews, all the Wilder, Stavern, and Joshua, and Dillian White, and talk. I'm trying to keep up on everything, man. But Wilder was saying, uh, you know, he will fight Dillian White if it's in paper. In it, I mean, if it's on paper and uh, it's confirmed that he will get AJ afterwards. Now I heard something that Hearn came out and said, well, yeah, you can fight White, but it's not guaranteed that he'll get AJ afterwards. It's like, you know... Come on with the slip talking con man type shit, man. It's, it's either it is or it's not, man. Are you going to draw up the contract to guarantee uh, AJ fight afterwards after him fighting the guy? And look, White's doing what he's supposed to be doing for his fighter. I mean, uh, I'm sorry. Hearn is doing what he is supposed to be doing for White. He's trying to lobby to get him a title shot. So I understand that. But I'm a consumer. I'm a damn fan. And we want to see Wilder versus AJ, man. AJ versus Wilder, however you want to put it, all right? Nobody wants to, as, as a Wilder keeps saying, I don't want to see this appetizer. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see this J, this junior varsity game. You know what I mean? I don't want to see that, man. I just want to see the best fight the best. And then the guy gets criticized for wanting to fight AJ. You just want to cash out. Well, the money's going to come with fighting, AJ, uh, fighting AJ regardless. Takum's going to cash out. You know what I mean? Anybody that fights fucking AJ is going to cash out to some degree. So, I mean, what are we saying here? So, we, we might as well say that for every fucking fighter that fights them, that they want to cash out. Okay, with the cash and all that, it's also a fight between arguably the two best heavyweights. So, I don't see what White brings to this, man. Like, yeah, it'd be a decent fight, but like I said, man, yes, White is very popular in the, well, he's popular in the UK. He came over here. I mean, it's not like he's some global superstar. He came over here and fought of, he fought in front of literally 12 and a half people <laughs> over there in Lincoln, Nebraska. You know what? And it's hard for me to to not like Dillian White. It's it's for for me. It's hard cuz I, I I like his banter. I like his shit talk. I don't agree with everything he says, but I I like his personality as far as his heavyweight division goes. Just much like Jarrell Miller. And Jarrell says a lot of shit about Wilder. I, and half the shit I think is funny as hell. You know what I'm saying? So I like guys with those type of personalities, man. Those guys that aren't afraid to say stuff and ruffle feathers. And I, I love that shit. But as far as this fight between Adrian Wilder, I don't think nobody should be getting in the way of that. Unless you're a mandatory. Unless you're a mandatory. And after they take care of these mandatory, they should be free. I know the WBA... I'm not sure what they're going to do. I know Ortiz has to sit out now, so I'm not sure. If there's some free room, man, we, we, we need to get that fight. Uh, Parker and his team, I just did a video about it the other uh, yesterday. Kevin Barry said that, they can, that he said, this is what he said. I did a video about it uh, yesterday. He said that they can make the Wilder fight tomorrow if they wanted to. And I'm scratching my head like, huh? It's like, so I was right the last seven, eight months when I kept saying that that fight should be easy to make? Well, maybe it's because he took care of Hue, uh, Huey Fury, but I've been saying that shit for eight months now. Like, <laughs> So it's like, but see, you can't feed us that, man, especially us rabbit fans. You, you cannot feed us that, that, that fight. Oh, that fight's easy to make. Well, shit, if he can't get Joshua, let's make the Wilder Parker fight. Now, when we come back and revisit that, 
You can't tell me that he's not ready and we, you know, come on, man. You just told us that that fight can be made easily, Kevin Barry. So if that time comes again in the next, you know, four, five, six months, I want to hear that same story that you just gave us, man. Let's just stay consistent. You know what I'm saying? Um, Gabriel Gonzaga, UFC fighter. People have been asking me about him, too. He's going to fight this Saturday. You know, I'm and I'm going to get back to the Wilder. Well, actually, let me just finish up the Wilder thing. And, you know, so if the white fight comes about and he becomes the mandatory, then, of course, I'm going to say fight white. I'm not going to say, no, don't don't fight white. Fuck that he's your mandatory. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say fight him. You know what I mean? Get the mandatory out the way. But until that happens or if it happens, we want the Joshua fight. And no, he doesn't have to fight dealing with unless Hearn's ready to put it in the contract. But then Hearn can't say, yeah, you know, we'll set it up like that. And then on Monday, he says that. Then on Friday, oh, well, you know, it's not guaranteed, though. And then, and then that's another thing. Some of you guys got to realize, man, these guys have their own promoters, managers, their own teams. Wilder would be a fucking fool to sit here and listen to Hearn's instructions. Just like... uh. And let me not use AJ because people will say, well, he's the cash cow. Just like, uh, let me see, who would make less than Wilder if they were to fight? Let's say Jarrell Miller. Let's say he beats Watt. Miller would be a fool to sit here and just and just get dictated or just let uh, De DeBella dictate to him um, and Wilder and his team. You know what I mean? Without trying to rebuttal and say, okay, well, how about this? Or at least try to negotiate. Wilder would be a fool to just sit here and just listen to what uh, Hearn wants to do. Any fighter would be. You got your own team for that. What Hearn is doing is not new, man. Like us, you know, here here in the U.S. at least, we grew up with Don King and Aram and all of them, man. Like, we didn't been there, done that before. Yes, he's doing a, a good job. And I know out there in the U.K., I, look, I don't live out there. So maybe out there it's like you guys haven't had this in a while and it's just so new and so exciting for you guys. That, and that's cool, man. I get it. But out here, it's like, we didn't seen this before. This ain't nothing but a motherfucking replay. This is a remix. We didn't seen this before, man. So, but yeah, Gabriel Gonzaga, he, uh, UFC fighter. People been asking me about him or mixed martial arts. Um, you know, with the heavyweights coming over, in my opinion, from like the UFC to the boxing, it's a little different than the smaller weight classes. Um, as you know, heavyweights, they can be more, uh, you know, just slower in their approach to fighting. Um, big guys can, you know, sit there and jab, jab, and then look for big shots. And it's just a different pace than somebody trying to come and fight in the welterweight division or the lightweight division. You know, it's just different. I don't know how he'll do, you know, but if you got heavy hands, you can move your damn head, and you got a little bit of stamina, you got a chance at it in, in the heavyweight division. A lot of these guys, especially in this era, they're coming from the football fields and basketball courts and rugby fields and all this. Although there are some guys, like, for example, this 2016 class of Olympians that turned pro, uh, Daichko and um, Herkovich and um, Yoka, those guys have had a plethora, and Joyce, those guys have had a plethora of, um, you know, amateur fights and world uh, series of boxing fights and olympians and all that so i'm not saying every heavyweight's like that but a lot of them are coming from other sports late in their life brian jennings deontay wilder shit even aj didn't have a long extensive amateur background you know what i mean so we'll see how gonzaga does man um let me see here adrian granat's going to be coming back as you can see here november 1st he was one of the guys who i had shit a before his loss to Dimitrenko, he was like one of the top, in my opinion, at least one of the top 10 heavyweight prospects out there. Uh, we'll see how he looks, man. When he bounces back, he fought Dimitrenko, got knocked out. I thought Dimitrenko will be fighting again. I, I thought he would capitalize off of his win, man. Let me look up Dimitrenko, see if there's any news on him. I heard he was one of the guys, I heard he was one of the guys that turned down Dillian White fight for this Saturday. Yeah, he hasn't done much since, man. He beat Granat and he's kind of just chilled ever since. I would have thought he would have capitalized off that. Uh, but he's he's idle right now, so I don't know. Let me see here. Try to see some more. Robert Filipovich, he just fought Chisura, right? Yeah, and he fought Constantine Harris a few times. I just know of him. 
Kyra Toro Fujimoto. He'll be fighting Randall Raymond on November 4th. Okay. Fujimoto was somebody's name's being floated around to fight Parker in December. And then I just did a video yesterday of Parker and his team saying that they will not be fighting in December. Not enough time. He said the Japanese couldn't put up enough money for the fight. So on and so forth. You guys can read that article. I attached it to the video I did yesterday. But I'm kind of glad he's not fighting Fujimoto. I thought that was just... Although, if he was to fight Fujimoto and they get right back in the ring, you know, February, March, like they're planning to, I guess. And Fujimoto, whether we like it or not, I think the current WBO rankings, he is number seven. So, factually, he is a top seven rated WBO fighter. But it's just, a lot of us just didn't want to see that. You know what I mean? Um, Caballero versus Chisura. I've already done a prediction on that video. It should be a good fight. Uh, Caballero thinks going to punch in combinations, move his feet. It, to me, is can can he handle the pressure that Chisura is going to bring, and will he have better stamina than Chisura going down the stretch? Um, and can he keep Chisura off of him? Because Chisura, I believe, is going to bring the fight to him. But if Chisura stands uh, chooses to just fight differently for whatever and try to stay on the outside, and I think Caballero can possibly outspeed him and outpoint him. But we'll see how that fight goes. Um, let me see here, trying to see anything else I can talk about really quick. Brazil versus Molina is going to be a good one, man. Then you got Wilder Stavern. Um, hmm, Brazil, Molina. I think Molina's going to have to stay off the ropes, man. I know Molina, he likes to ride with shots. He likes to ride with shots, man. Then he likes to counter with good, with good right hands and left hooks. Brazil, man, he's make man. Brazil's a tough dude. I heard Mayor Man Source say he's a trooper, saying that Brazil can take an ass whooping, and he can. That dude can take some punishment, man. That's probably one of his biggest. <laughs> that's probably one of his best qualities, man, is being able to take shots and keep coming, man. But that's a, ooh, boy, that's a tough way to stay in a sport, man. Being one of those guys, especially at heavyweights, when you're getting hit with extreme, extreme hard shots, man, extremely hard shots. So. Pressure his jab and can he pressure Molina into the point to where he beats Molina up, man, and makes him stop or he puts him down or his corner throws in the towel? Or can Molina make Brazil miss, tire him out, go to his body and see what Brazil has down the stretch after missing a lot of punches, being a little bit tired? Um, because he showed a little bit fatigue when, when, when you start putting them hands on him, you know what I mean? But We'll see, man. You know, will Molina, will he be, you know, how selective will he be with his punches? I know he's going to go out there to land big right hands. That's one thing Brazil has shown is he can be hurt. Both these guys have shown that they can be hurt. You know, so it's, it's going to be a pretty interesting fight. Wilder Stavern. Stavern seems amped up for this, man. I heard him on, uh, was that the was that fight hype? It was like a conference call. And it was some reporter, man, was, <laughs> was getting at Stavern. Stavern got pissed off. It was about, because, you know, Stavern went on to say, I ate his shot. He ate. Wilder shots like M&M's and nobody can knock me out and I can't be knocked out and I was sick and I still went 12 rounds. It's like, and that's, okay, Stavern, that's cool, bro, but you damn near lost every round. I think I gave him one or two rounds, two, maybe one. I don't know, did I even give him a round? He damn near got shut out, you know what I mean? But uh, I think, you know, like I said, man, I think Stavern needs to... Whenever Wilder gets ready to throw that jab, he has to just throw right hands. Just, just you know, automatically, as soon as you see the jab, just throw a right hand. Just throw overhand right over Wilder's jab. That's his best, to me, the best way he can win a fight. Try to go to the body, you know, but if he stands on the outside, and just throw up the high guard and let Wilder get off, and then he'll try to get off after Wilder's gotten off, he's just going to get outpointed or, or he's going to get knocked out. You know what I mean? Um gonna have to have a better game plan and just plotting around with the high guard man i think we have to throw overhand rights overhand lefts go to the body and be in and be in good shape we don't want to hear about you being dehydrated or anything like that you know what i mean um when i went back and watch you know when i watch wild i just i just don't watch all his knockouts i try to be objective with every fighter and go and watch some of the fights they didn't look so well in or go back to their amateur days just to see how much better did they get or what was bothering them in the amateurs and you know what i mean like and although this fight was about 10 years ago, and I think Wilder's a complete different fighter, just his frame looks different too. But the fight he had against that Romanov dude in the uh, in, in the amateurs, the fight that he got stopped, 
And the punch that was giving Wilder trouble was the right hand. As soon as he threw the jab, the Romanov dude just automatically threw a right hand. It's like he didn't wait. He, he didn't hold on. He didn't let the, the jab hit him and then, or touch his glove or his face and then punch. Soon as like Wilder was throwing it, he just threw the right. Now, that can get you in trouble because Wilder's right hand could be coming right behind that jab. But you got to take chances, man. You got to. You, you, you got to. So, we'll see, man. Should be a good fight. I'm picking Wilder to dominate Stavern. Um... We'll see. Emmanuel Nuoto. Is this the dude that fought on ESPN? That fought, uh, what's that dude named? The Dingaling Man? Hold on. Is that the dude that got knocked out back in the day? Yeah, he fought Darnell Wilson about 10 years ago. Y'all remember that fight on ESPN, man? Ooh, Darnell Wilson knocked him out nasty. He's a heavyweight now? Well, I guess. You know how it is, man. The older you get, you get to start gaining weight. Yeah, the dude turned pro in 98. And he was, was he a cruiserweight back then when he fought? Yeah, so. I ain't seen that dude in years. Let me see what else uh, I can talk about. Hasim Rockman Jr. Man, did y'all hear about Rockman Jr.? <laughs> he was getting ready to fight. Y'all can look this up, man. He was, he was getting ready to fight last week or something. And the dude he was going to fight just wouldn't come out. Like, no, it's, look, the dude... Rockman Jr. is in the ring waiting for the dude to walk to the ring and the dude won't come out the back. And then they said that uh, they some people went back there to talk to him to get him to come out and he refused to come out and fight. And I guess the announcer got on the microphone and says, I forgot the dude's name, man. He was like, whatever the dude's name is, has left the building. I don't know what the hell is going on with that one. Maybe it was a money issue. Maybe they promised him some money and... They didn't pay him or something, or, 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 or was he that scared? I don't, man. I don't know the gentleman. I don't know what happened, but I thought that story was crazy. Maybe it was a money issue. Maybe he didn't want the work. I have no clue, man. But I thought that was crazy. But Rockman Jr. will be in action uh, November fourth. So, going to go, you know, going to follow his career, see how he does, man. Um, trying to see some other fights here before I close this. Then you got Junior Five versus Fred Latham. That should be a good fight. I've talked about that already. Latham's a pretty, you know, got pretty fast hands. Um, a lot shorter than five, but he has fast hands, and he is a wide body. He's about 250 pounds or something like that. Uh, he had a close fight that went to draw with uh, Alonzo Butler. Um, Butler's actually in the Wilder camp right now calling out Dillian White. Butler calls out everybody, called out Lucas Brown. I actually posted a few of his videos on my channel. Um yeah, man, that fight's going to be on uh, Showtime. I believe it's going to be a Showbox card out there in Cleveland. So if you're in that Cleveland area, man, go out and check out that card, man. Check out Junior Fa, one of Lou DeBella's heavyweight 12-0. You know, he actually beat Joseph Parker twice in the amateurs, and he lost twice. They're 2-2 two and two against each other. Um, pretty good on his feet for a big guy. He's about 6'6", 270 or something like that, 260. Fa's pretty quick on his feet, got quick hands himself. A lot of World Series of Boxing experience. Um, he's fought Usyk. He's fought a lot of guys in that World Series of Boxing. Latham has quick hands. It's going to be a good fight, man. This is not a gimme fight for Fah. Uh Latham's going to come to win. He's going to come. He, he has quick hands himself. So he, he will come to win that fight. Um, let me see here. Nathan Gorman versus Nick Webb. I'm going to end it here. There's some more stuff. Uh, Martin Bacoli of Lunga. Man, that dude's a good prospect right there. Lunga is a good prospect. I've done a video on him. Ali Baghouse. I've never heard of this guy who's going to fight. Um, I've never heard of the guy who's going to fight, man. But I'll probably look up on that fight. But I like uh, Lunga as a, a prospect. But back to this Gorman versus Webb fight, man. That's going to be a good fight right there. Gorman, good body puncher. You know he's a Rick, Ricky Hatton. That's one thing Ricky Hatton will teach you is how to go to the body. Uh, Webb's a big guy. You know, 6'6". Six, six. Um, he likes to fight though, man. I want him. I think in this fight he needs to use his jab, keep Gorman on the outside, try to catch him with uppercuts. Being that Gorman's gonna try to go to that body, try to catch him with uppercuts, stand him up, catch him with uppercuts, keep that jab on him. But Webb has a tendency to where he'll go toe to toe with you, and if he does that, I think that's gonna favor Gorman in that type of situation. Gorman technique looks a little bit more polished, in my opinion. It's gonna be a good fight. I'm going to do more videos about that fight as it approaches, man. But just pretty much a uh, then Jarrell Miller versus Marius Wack. Man, Miller and Wack. Um, Miller wants to stop him, man. He wants to do 
And that, you know, and Wok only got stopped late against Pavek. And was that the 12th round that he got stopped? Because of a cut. So it wasn't like he, you know, got knocked down or knocked out or anything. Wok is a hard dude to put down, man. Klitschko couldn't couldn't get him out of there. Um, now that, see this fight right here against uh, Marcelo Nascimento. I thought that was a very close fight. They could have went either way. Nascimento was using his legs, using his jab. I thought he outpointed Wok in that fight, in my opinion. Miller fights totally different than that. He's going to come forward. Um, Walk also beat Irk and Tepper right here. But, you know, Miller's going to come forward. I think he's going to go to his body. I think he's going to have an opportunity to really stop Walk, man. You know, but um, Walk is very hard to hurt, and he does have a hard right hand. I can't lie. He does have a hard right hand. And if you don't believe me, go watch the Christian Hammer fight. I believe it was a right hand that he stopped Hammer with, but he put Hammer out of there. You know what I mean? Although it was Christian Hammer, only had eight fights. He still uh, put that, you know, put them shots on his ass, man. Got him up out of there. Um, curious to see if if Miller not only can just win the fight, but if he can stop Marius Wack. I think that would be impressive. Although Wack is getting up there in age, he is 37 years old. But we know the heavyweight division. Sometimes these big guys, man. You know, it's, it's just a much slower pace, you know. Um, sometimes big guys can get better with age, but... Wok hasn't really seemed like he's any better than he was, you know, years ago, you know, five, six, seven years ago. But should be some good fights. I'm going to do more videos, man. Y'all let me know what you think in the comment section. I'm gone.